During the early 90s, teenagers all over America began to emulate and honour heroes of primetime TV wrestling, with complex moves, storylines and characters all being taken from the arenas and into their own backyards. It wasn't long before this phenomenon found its way to the UK and began to thrive in Northern England, where the glitz and glamour were to be replaced by cold, damp, dirty gardens and parks, and an underground subculture was born. Style, flair, dedication and creativity all fought against the harsh realities of Northern life, where today the phenomenon continues to grow with internet sites, DVD sales and even dedicated video games. Welcome to the world of Backyard Wrestling. Although backyard wrestling is rife in Northern England and the UK, finding groups or federations that are willing to open up their tight-knit communities proved challenging. However, we negotiated with one of the UK's most creative backyard wrestling federations, Battle Zone Wrestling, BZW, who granted us exclusive access to their highly organised operation. I had another company before this, but things didn't go too well and I stopped wrestling. Then seven, eight months later, Danny wanted to start again. So we come up with BZW. Come on! With a large, loyal fan base, the BZW Federation stages monthly pay-per-view events. In between these shows, their website is updated with character developments, storylines, and taunts to rival federations. It's like a new concept. It's a bit of everything. The roster gets treated fairly. Danny kind of tells us what, what he wants us to kind of be like and then we tell it, we like work from there. Danny gives us like a skeleton and we kind of fill it in with work some fashion shit. Well, we've been wrestling, wrestling for quite a long time now and we all know what to do and so we don't get hurt from, you know, really bad. You can't really say stop in the middle of the match and say like don't kick me or don't slam me or anything. And if you hurt someone you can't go up and go, oh sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry, <laughs> even when you're filming you just can't do you it. You just gotta go like, how? <laughs> God, no! <laughs> I try and make it my, the best way I can so my opponent doesn't get seriously injured. So it's got to look sick but not be life threatening. Face wash! Yeah, if you get hurt, you just carry on, unless you really, really are I mean, Shoot, like a broken leg or something. <laughs> then you just kind of quickly finish the match, like just pin them down. Um, well, they're used to hit people with. I'll oh, just snap them over people's heads, break them on any part of the body, really. Oh, it's pretty scary, isn't it? Knowing that I'm going to get smashed in the face with him. And probably yeah. choked to death with him. <laughs> <laughs> and especially big guy. You don't send you running, you don't think what I'm going to do. Well, I know, it's a bit funny, yeah. really. Oh, think about it. Yeah. What's a bit of pain? <laughs> I'm taking a real big risk, like today we twisted his uh, very, very big lad, like, and we lifted something like that. I couldn't, like, slip a disc coming back or anything. And I risk it, but at the end of the day, it's just a few bumps and bruises. And, I'm all right. James is the oldest member of the group and at 20 years old with a wife and child I wondered how wrestling fits into his daily life and responsibilities and how others his age see his involvement in backyard wrestling. I'll have been married a year in February and I've got a, a daughter who will be one on Boxing Day. When we're well, actually wrestling it's we're actually doing it real it's it's not all this fake crap that you see on telly. Like it's actually we are actually eating each other. We are actually getting injured and stuff like that. So if I actually seriously do get injured, it's just like, what's she gonna do without me? And like, I've got a big part in like running the family and stuff like that. So my wife's actually into wrestling. Uh, when we first met, she didn't go on about it. Cause she didn't want to make her look like a a chick who likes watching grown men wrestle about. And, my daughter, like, she sits here and she watches at it. 
she might actually grow up to liking it because I do it myself. And because I'm always watching it, she might grow up and be really into it. Like some kids grow up to be big football fans. They're always watching football with her parents and she's watching wrestling with me. So I think she'll turn out to be a wrestling freak, a bit like me. So It's like we're full of respect for him because he's got a, um, a family. Yeah, so if there's a family issue and he can't come for whatever reason, then yeah. that's fine because he's got a child more important than an hobby. Yeah. So that's the way, that's the way it works. But he seems to be able to fit it all in with his family situation and whatever else with his job, so... We'll good, support him through yeah, that as well. Good luck for him. Good for him. Because you're a little bit older than the other guys, what do your friends and family think of what you're doing? Well... I think I'm just a, bit, a little boy, been a bit stupid, uh, going out wrestling with little kids who was younger than me. But I just think stuff them. They're going to be morbid and go out and get bladded every night. Yeah, I have a drink occasionally after a match, I have a, I have a couple of cans. It's it's all part of my life in a way because I've been watching wrestling since I was eight years old. I, I've been involved with it for... Me and Daniel's been doing it since what, since we're about 12 years old. It's like near enough five years we've been doing it. And we really enjoy doing it anyway, so... To me, if they don't like it, it's not their life, is it? So why should they have a problem with it? Chance to have fun for me, and chance to do what we love to do. Yeah, chance for our ideas to be. We create our ideas instead of just being at work or school or whatever and being told what to do. This is our chance to do what we want to do, put our ideas in, and show people that we can be creative, we can be innovative, and we show people what we can and want to do. Chesterfield is it's really limited. There's, no, there's nothing to do with wrestling apart from the odd backyard wrestling companies and we, we love wrestling that much, we want to do it, but there's nowhere we can, so this is our only way to do it. And if there was a place like the wrestling school close, then I'd be first on me, or we both would Yeah, that's something I aim to do in the future, go to wrestling school, yeah, try, and, try my best to make a career. But for now, it's if somebody wants to put a wrestling school in Chesterfield, great, I'll be first one down there. But for the time being, I'm having fun what I'm doing. There'd be no point in doing it if we were the only people that were going to see it. We're in it to entertain, basically, yeah. you know, at the end of the day. We're just and in it to entertain people. like it as well. <laughs> it's just fun. Yeah. You feel a part of something too, because we all get along pretty good behind the scenes. If I were in a wheelchair, I'd still try. <laughs> There's no ideas in the area, like, they never, they're no ideas put together by anyone to make anything good. The council are too busy putting flowers around trees and building so. places for kids like us to... Go on, get off off the streets and enjoy ourselves. So this is something creative in the area. Anybody's welcome to come down and watch. If people want to be a part in it, they can talk to us and sure we can find them a part in it. I do it for you fun, but I do it for fun as yeah, well. But, but being paid for it's like an added bonus, isn't it? Yeah, total add, added bonus. It's the end of day. You need money, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do it for fun. I do it for fun. Yeah. Definitely. You know, whenever we've got spare time, just love to get out in the fields and just wrestle. Yeah! Oh!